Hello there, today I'm going to be sowing some beetroot, so come inside and see what I'm up to. Now beetroot has quite a history attached to it, dating back to ancient times, including the ancient Greeks who cultivated it around the year 300 BC. It contains fibre, iron, vitamin C, potassium, manganese and other nutrients. It's said to have health benefits including lowering blood pressure, anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory, detoxify the liver, it's said to boost athletic performance by enhancing aerobic performance and improve muscle contraction functions. It's been described as nature's Viagra and history shows us that the Romans used it for this very reason. So it's not a new discovery. Now, it's said to have benefits for both men and the ladies as well. So there we are. Now I'll let you do your own research and make your own decision and your own practical application as to whether this is indeed a potential benefit. Now we've discussed the benefits of beetroot, let's talk about the varieties I'm going to be sowing today. Now I am making these sowings of beetroot relatively early and if you're going to be making early sowings of beetroot Generally, the variety recommended for this is Boltardi, which is probably among gardeners here in the UK, the most commonly grown beetroot, and it's a globe variety. Another globe variety I'm going to be sowing today is Moulin Rouge. Depending on the weather and the climate where which you live, globe varieties of beetroot can be ready as quickly as 10 weeks after sowing. The other variety today is Cylindra, so this is a cylindrical shaped beetroot. The other variety to go in today is White Albino, and this is a slightly pointy white beetroot. Now down here you can see my setup, so I'm going to be sowing these beetroot seeds into cell trays. I'm using multi-purpose compost, and what I've done is I've filled up the cell trays and I've pushed the compost down nice and firm so they've got a nice firm base to grow from. So the way I achieve this is I get my trowel and I get my compost like this and put it in on the top like that. And I simply just level off the top. And what I do is proceed to just push, push down like this. So it's nice and firm. Try and take out any clumps if you can. Don't be shy get plenty in there and push it down and the seeds will thank you for having a nice firm base in which to germinate from. Now I'm not a fan of planting seeds into cold compost. A lot of this comes from some of the more exotic plants I grow such as melons. I don't want to be shocking the seeds when I plant them. So what I do is warm the compost up a little bit before I plant. And what I like to do when I'm setting up my cell trays, putting the compost in them, is to take it from a bucket like this. I find it much more convenient. So I go outside, fill up my bucket with multi-purpose compost, and then what you can do is put it a safe distance away from a heat source, such as a radiator, and let it warm up maybe for an hour or two. And you could even leave it overnight in the house before you use it. And I think that's particularly important at this time of year when it is relatively chilly. Now I'll show you how I'm individually planting these and I'm planting about four seeds to each cell. Now I'm trying to space them out a little bit so that they don't grow into each other too much. Of course they will to a degree but I'm just going to minimise that a little bit. Might be five in that one but we'll let that go. One thing I've found about beetroot is if they're sown too thickly, as long as they're not too big, you can actually move the seedlings, which I think's quite a nice idea. Transplant them to another area. I then just put a layer of multi-purpose compost over the top 
like so. Don't forget your tag. Put on the variety and what it is. I think that's a good plan. There's my beetroot, all nicely sown. Beetroot seeds like a temperature of between 10 to 30 degrees C in order to germinate. That's about 50 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. And due to the weather, I'm not going to be achieving that here in this polytunnel. So they're going to go inside on a south-facing windowsill. If you don't have a south-facing one, you could put them on another one. If you've got a conservatory, that could be great. Now the general advice is not to put seeds in between the curtain and the window due to the cold air in between that void but uh, I don't have a choice with that some of you may be in the same boat or some of you may have a different option and one option could be to put them behind a cloudy glass window such as what you've got in a bathroom something like that but uh, I've generally not found it too much of a problem germinating them in between the curtain and the window I'm going to be watering these when I take them in and then probably about three or four days later. So I'm probably going to be watering these about twice a week. They won't be using too much water up at this stage of their life. And the way that I water them is I use a watering can. This is my watering can that I use for my indoor watering. This is made by Ward, I believe, a company I've found very good for making watering cans and what I do is use rainwater from the water butt and once again I let it warm up a little bit before I water the seeds because I don't want to shock them so you could maybe leave it overnight or give it a few hours and then water your seeds. I hope you enjoyed that if you like my work please feel free to like share and subscribe and you can always check me out on Dan underscore home gardens on Instagram if indeed you're interested thank you very much for viewing.